Good morning. Oh, it's on. Um, we do have some announcements this morning. Uh, the first one's not a pleasant one. Uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, Ken Pierce passed away yesterday. Um, it was rather sudden. Pardon me? Ken Pierce. Yeah. You can't hear me? You don't want to hear the, what's coming later on, but um, okay. Want to make sure that gets gets communicated. Um, and so it just happened yesterday, so there, we know nothing, no details or anything. So, uh, just a couple observations. Um, I was paging through the paper, and I came across an ad for burial plots, and I thought to myself, "Oh, that's the last thing I need." Uh, okay, well, so I had a knock on the door the other, other day, and it was a police officer. And he said, uh, Mr. Lamb, um, your dogs are chasing people on bikes. I said, that's crazy. My dogs don't even own a bike. <laughs> well, you know, electric cars are being made more and more each day. And even, you know, uh, Tesla, of course, is, a, is the most famous one. But uh, Ford and GM are, are getting into the whole manufacturing thing. And so is Apple. Yeah, Apple announced that they were in, in electric car business as well. But they have a big problem. Most car companies struggle with having a big enough battery Apple is struggling with installing windows. Uh, it's a long way to get to nowhere, you know? Ah, that's pretty bad. Oh yeah, what musical instrument do you find in the bathroom? I know it's kind of, yeah. No musical instrument for the bathroom? A tuba toothpaste. Yeah, okay, see? Uh, no, that's bad. Um, you know, the, with all the job offerings uh, these days, uh, a koala bear applied for a job but was turned down and found out that they weren't koalified. Okay, well. Uh, what day of the week are most twins born on? Tuesday, Tuesday right. Yeah, you got it. See? See, these are easy, easy to get. Yeah, it's Tuesday, yeah. Well, these are kind of silly observations, but when we get to our lessons, the theme as we get to the end of the church year uh, focuses on the end of time, and as well, our lessons this morning. Uh, that is harder to understand. These are impossible, so um, you can tell the difference. So if you please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of the things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our opening hymn, hymn number 327, Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as a ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from Malachi chapter 4, 1 and 2a. Word of God, word of life. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. For Psalm 98, please read the bold print while I read the fine print. Thank you. Sing a new song to the Lord who has d done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoicing and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. Word of God, word of life. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have the right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, Anyone unwilling to work should not eat, for we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busy bodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. the words of eternal life. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, 
As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, uh, when will this be? And what, sign, what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrection, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you, they will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be, be, be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. This morning, if you hadn't noticed, our, our lessons do reflect the end times. And it's always a lovely topic because our curiosity far outweighs our knowledge. But I have to tell you, I'm <clears throat> quite an expert on the end times. Yeah, yeah, you probably don't think of that right often, but uh, yeah, you're looking at an expert right here. Yeah, I know when the end times arrive, my subscription for the magazine runs out, and that's the end of time. Or the clock that has been sitting on the wall falls and busts all over the place. That's the end of time. Yeah. Apart from that, I know nothing. Um, that's the kind of end of time I'm familiar with. The kind in our lessons is another story. There's a lot of speculation about the end of time, about when time ends, when Jesus returns, and it's a time of judgment and deliverance, uh, when existence as we know it seems to come to an end. And again, our curiosity is enormous, but our knowledge is slight. Of course, that's just another one of those things. If you stop and think about it, what do we know about creation? Can we really comprehend creation? How God created the world? How God brought order out of chaos? Ah, it kind of goes beyond our comprehension. And while we're at it, we might as well add God to that list. If you stop and think about it, what do we really comprehend and understand about God? Oh, we talk a lot about him, and we don't even talk about God as a him, because that's our language. But what do we really understand? Well, not much. We don't understand how God does what God does. And we certainly don't understand why God does what God does, but then God is God and we're not. So it's makes some sense. And in the midst of that vacuum of knowledge, we fill in the blanks. You know? We fill in the blanks and kind of pass it off as being the truth, the only truth and nothing but the truth. Well, yeah. But we do fill in the blanks. And every civilization has done it about the origins of the world, and you've got to love all those stories about the stars, etc., because we're trying to comprehend things which are beyond 
our comprehension. And that's pretty normal. It's when we start insisting that we have a corner on the market. We have the truth and no one else does that we get into trouble. We start defining God and talking about God in such a way that, that we begin to limit God into something that we can understand and therefore control. Oh, God did never do that, and we know that. I mean, one thing we know for certain, God was Norwegian. <laughs> uh, well, he was and everything else, of course, but, um, you know, but those silly kind of statements that to insist that that's absolute truth is, ah. And so, when we look at our lessons this morning, and Jesus is with some people by the temple, and the talk of the end times comes up, how does Jesus approach it? He uses the two A's. He acknowledges and he assures. He acknowledges what is about to come. And he acknowledges it in words that have been used before and understandings, but it doesn't give any more insight into it than anyone else. But he assures in the midst of it that God is still very much alive and present and loving. And so they come outside the temple and somebody looks at the stones and says, isn't this beautiful? And Jesus says, you know, the time's coming when it, one stone will not be left upon another. Oh, and inquiry minds want to know, of course. Um, when is this going to happen and what are the signs? And Jesus then goes through acknowledging the, the things that people have said um, that they already know that kingdom will rise up against kingdom, will be earthquakes and famines and plagues and signs. Um, he said, don't worry about that. Those things will happen. But before that, you're going to be persecuted. Oh, hey, that's good news, isn't it? <laughs> now we know the future, yeah. He says, yeah, you're going to be persecuted because of my name. People will hate you, revile you, put you on trial. And here's the assurance. You don't have to cram for the test. Okay, it lets us all off the hook. Because when that time comes, Jesus says, I will give you wisdom to know how to respond, how to react, with a wisdom that nobody can contradict. So in the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of, of the unknown that lies ahead, is the assurance that God's love and compassion will always be there. Even in our, our first lesson, uh, in, Malachi simply talks about the time is coming. He says the time is coming, but for those who trust, God's love will be, always be there. In Thessalonians, the Thessalonians began to take the anticipation of the end of time, of Jesus returning, he hadn't, you know, he hadn't left that long ago. Um, and they thought for sure Jesus was going to return next Tuesday. You know, every year it was next Tuesday. Every week it was next Tuesday. Uh, it was going to happen imminently. And so some of them took that very seriously and said, yeah, I don't have to work. And started sponging off other people, living off other people. And so Paul addresses that issue and says, the end is coming, to be sure. Christ will return, uh, and it'll be soon, whatever that means. But in the meantime, follow our example. And his example was when Paul would go someplace, he would be a worker priest kind of thing. He would try to do some, some work in order to earn his, his way through as an example to all of what being faithful was about. It was about pulling your own weight. It was about working for that which you received. It was for contributing to the community and not simply living off of it. And so he encourages them as they await the end of time to not be weary in doing what is right and being part of that community. Our lessons this morning remind us that that time is coming. And in some respects, Hasn't it already arrived? 
these past few years with the pandemic. It's kind of like the end of time. You know, everything we knew was out the window. Everything we counted on, uh, we couldn't count on. And yet, and yet we did. And one of the things I think we discovered is things change. And the things we thought were so dear and we had to do, ah, okay. At the beginning of our lesson, and this is part that most people skip over, as they come out of the temple, um, what's the description? These stones and all these things, the beautiful stones and gifts that were dedicated to God, our text says. Even the precious things dedicated to God will be gone. All of the things we held so dear. And we understand that. We live through that. And we'll continue to live through that uh, for the rest of our lives. The things that we thought were so dear, well, what is the real point? Is it to the glory of God or for ourselves? Our lessons this morning do remind us of that time that is coming. And as the life of Ken Pierce reminds us, none of us get out alive. We all die. And yet, we don't die alone. We don't live alone. God is with us in the midst of it all. And it isn't always pleasant. And it isn't always fun. But it is joyful. It is joyful, like living in this community, in Alamogordo, with all the funny mountains. You got to laugh at them, don't you? Because they're hilarious. <laughs> uh, and so is our life with the Lord. It is a life filled with joy, and especially the knowledge that we are not alone. We come to our Lord's table this morning, and there we receive life once again. God is a life giver, and here in simple bread and simple wine, he reminds us and gives us that life in his very presence to remind us that we are forgiven, that we are free simply to be what he has called us to be. So as we face the uncertainty of the future, we do so knowing that God is with us. We do so with joy, we do so with humor. We do so with great compassion for others. And all we can say is thanks be to God. Amen.
united with your saints across time and place, <clears throat> we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and in ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in the proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Renewing God as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Just the treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for the loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. God's peace, Carol. God's peace, Diane. God's peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. Come for all is ready. Come to
and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed, fed us, us with, with the bread, the bread of, of heaven, heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes life in the, us, into us in the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him how firm a foundation. Be a blessing in the world. Thank you, God. God.